Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be porting a Eaton M90 supercharger. This particular supercharger is off of a VX Holden Commodore V6 L67 motor, I believe. Uh, it's a Gen 3 supercharger. So we're trying to match the efficiency of the Gen 5s, which were a better flowing charger. But yeah, I'll flip this over and we'll have a look at what the plan is. Okay, so supercharge is over. Plan with this porting job is these knobs here on the discharge side of the supercharger. They actually removed these in the Gen 5s. So if you can imagine coming straight across here and straight there on both sides, that's what we're looking to achieve. Uh, it just helps increase the airflow or drops the turbulence as it comes out of it. So the other thing. A lot of people do while they're in here is close off these silence ports or air buffers. I'm not going to be doing that because there's not much point to that other than trying to increase the wind of the supercharger. But I mean, I'm spinning this thing at 10 psi on a 1UZ and it makes all the noises in the world. So I don't think there's any merit to that. Plus, from what research I've heard, when you block these off, you actually decrease the efficiency of the supercharger I'm not sure exactly by how much but I mean the whole point of porting this is to increase the efficiency so why negate that so I'll flip this over again and we'll go on with our first step okay so first step of this is this snout here is full of oil it's an oil bath in there and there's two gears synchronized together so as the input shaft turns it turns this gear, which turns this one, so both rotors mesh in time together. So, to drain it, we're going to open the fill port here and tip the supercharger upside down to try and get most of it out. Probably won't get all of it out, so when we go to remove the snout, there'll be some oil on the bench, which is a bit unavoidable. But, I mean, it's better than having oil absolutely everywhere, so we'll crack on with that. Alright, so GoPros decided they didn't want to work, so sorry about the iPhone footage, but we will start now. So this plug here is 730 seconds in Allen key, in hex socket, whatever you got. But I'll try and do this in real time. So it's cracked. Alright, that aside. So, see how much of a mess we can make with this, but this is the setup to try and catch this oil. So, we will try now. Alright, so it's draining out. I don't know how much you can, that you can see. So, I'll probably fast forward this bit here, and I'll show you when we're done. Okay, oil's drained. So, in this little bottle here, that's how much oil we managed to pull out of it. It's not a lot. These things are supposed to be 225 mils. Um, it actually smells really, really rank. And uh, that's not anything wrong with the oil. It's just supercharger oil seems to smell this way for whatever reason. But yeah, it smells pretty rotten. So, next step from here is these bolts on the front here. We will pull them out so we can remove the snout. So, that's next. Okay, so we've got nine of these bolts to pull out to get the snout off. On the Holland Commodore, these are 10 millimeter heads. I'm not sure what they are on Grand Prix and everything else, but we'll crack on with that and get them done. Okay, we've got the bolts out of the snout of the supercharger. This won't just fall off, they're always pretty stuck on there. So we'll get a punch and we'll be trying to tap him here and there and also gently from the underside and try and tap this bad boy off. So we'll try this now.
Okay, snouts off. The best method was actually on the bottom of this one. There is a little groove. Just here. And yeah, a few good taps on all three spots and it came right off. So the other thing to check for is on the inside of the snout here, we've got this coupling in here. A lot of the times these get brittle and break or distort and that'll give you slop in your charger. So my one here looks pretty good. So we'll be reusing that one and we'll have a look at the front of the charger. Okay. Okay, so we've got our cartridge assembly out now. So it's our two rotors and the gears are on the underside of that. So that's simply just sandwiched in between the body of the supercharger here and the snout there. So a couple of light taps through the center here with that brass drift and slides right out. Careful sliding them out because these are Teflon coated and we don't want to scratch them too much. But yeah, so now that they're out, we will protect all inside of here and the next step is to try and cut these out so we'll try that quick little update before i start i just wanted to show i'm probably over cautious but i've taped off all of this mating flange on the charger just to be safe so we don't scratch it because you know, we're trying to keep the pressure in not move it out so we've filled inside of the housing with rags and marked here so these are our lines that we want to cut out so there and there so we'll crack on to that okay sorry i haven't got the setup at the moment to show you with gopros while i'm doing the job but we've just used the jigsaw to cut through most of this here and there you can see you know, it's wiggling so that'll break out any sec so yeah it's just just regular old jigsaw and once we've pulled this out, we will use the Dremel and we'll go through and round off and put a bit of a radius on that edge and clean it all up, clean up a little bit in here and do the same thing over here. So be back in a minute. Okay, part progress. So we've cut out both little knobs, obviously. That was the quickest part, to be honest. Just zipped through them with the jigsaw. We were done in a couple minutes. So we're just finessing these little edges here. You can see there, I didn't quite cut that one as low as the other one, so I'm just dressing that up with a file. So it's pretty tedious, but you know, you get out what you put in. So the more time you spend now making this all nice and uniform and make sure they're nice smooth edges, the better outcome you'll get. So the other thing to show, I'm gonna flip this over. Didn't show up before, but I dressed up inside here with the Dremel because there was a bit of a random casting defect so it's just a little lump of stuff that was jutting out there it's probably uh, two millimeters something like that so you can work that out if you work with the wrong system so yeah we'll keep going on with this and dress all this up okay finished with the porting so try and get this so you can see a bit better Alright, so we've knocked those out and we've filed that right down. You can see that's pretty damn flat there now. And yeah, no burrs on here. It's all nice and radiused. Just the other thing I want to point out, flip this over. Alright, let's see if we can grab a light again. So inside here, where you can see where it's a Christmas tree shape now, those little bits in the corner there, that's where we've cut out. Don't forget to run a razor blade or something over those edges there where you've cut out your knobs of aluminium because there will be burrs there after you've filed and jigsawed or whatever. So I just run just a normal old razor blade along that edge there and all these edges just to make sure that that is 100% burr free because otherwise you're just going to end up tearing up your rotors. 
So we've cleaned out the housing now. So I just used some contact cleaner and went through, held this upside down obviously, and sprayed all in there and wiped it out with clean rags to make sure that we're super thorough, that there's nothing in there whatsoever because anything that's left in there is obviously just going to scratch up the rotating assembly. So done the same here. So we will slide that back in there now. So for sliding this back in, this machined face here is a ceiling face against the cartridge. So we need to get, they don't actually have like a gasket, they use an anaerobic sealant. So we are gonna clean off all four of this here. So we will use a bit of scotch bright pad and gently go around and get rid of all of the old sealant here and same thing there. And then we will put a bit of Loctite master gasket stuff's what I'm using, but yeah, any sort of reasonable anaerobic sealant that you can get that you're obviously not gonna put tons on there so it squeezes out and goes inside because you'll end up with stuff inside your supercharger. So I'll do that now. And there we go, nice and clean. So we gave that bit of a scrub all the way around there, same thing all the way around those faces with the uh, Scotch Bright pad and once again sprayed it down contact cleaner and wiped the absolute hell out of it because you know cleanliness is next to godliness I reckon so all right so now we will seal up that flange and slide in the cartridge just thought I'd show how much compound I put on it because this is literally it this tiniest little bead all the way around looked like absolutely nothing and then just smeared it around make sure it's very light thin and doesn't squeeze over and inside the housing when it's done so pop them together And just like that, the rotating assembly is back in. I didn't point out before, but make sure that you put the drive gear on the right side because obviously it's linked up to one side on the snout. So you put it in backwards and well, the holes aren't gonna light for a starter. So there's something to keep in mind. So pretty much the same step as before. We'll go through and make sure this is entirely clean I mean, it's pretty clean already, but we'll just make sure it's 100% ridgy didge. Clean in the faces, seal them up again, and whack the snap back on. And just like that, we're all sealed up, ready to go. So, we've taken note that the orientation of the drive pins for that gear, and I've set this up, so we've also got the holes for those drive pins to line up in the top half of the charger so with all that cleaned out coupling inspected we are ready to pop him back on And the snout is knocked on, so just use a dead blow hammer just to give it a bit of an even tap everywhere. So it's over the dowels and centered and flush. So now we'll pop the bolts in, and they're done up to 23 newton meters, which is pretty sure it's 17 foot pounds. 
and it's done up in like a zigzag sequence from the center so we will do that now and just like that we're in the future going back so i've just finished this and i'm pointing it out earlier for you don't do like i did and i forgot to cut down two of the bolts here because the lumps that you cut out of here had the threads in them so if you cut 10 millimeters off two of these bolts before you put them in then you'll be golden and you won't have to redo it like i'm doing but anyway back to where we were So we've just run the bolts in. We didn't nip them up, we just ran them through so we didn't have to wind forever. So we'll go through now and torque the bolts up to spec. Just remember, torquing anything, we'll do it in three stages. Final stage being 23 newton meters, 17 foot pounds. So, yep. Okay, so you probably didn't see a lot of that, but that's all talked up now. So you just sort of did the zigzag pattern. It's pretty vague um, from the diagram, but sort of went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bit of a funny Z pattern from the center out. So that's all talked up now. So that's one port of M90. I don't have my oil here yet, so I won't fill it up, but as I said in the beginning of the video, it's 225 milliliters in that hole, and then plug back in and you are good to go. So, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give me a like. Let me know people actually watch this stuff and they're interested and it might make more in the future. So, yeah, thanks for watching.